Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, June 20th, 2019. Let's take a look at what's happening, or in this case, what's not happening, as there are no currently active storms, according to the University of Wisconsin site here. And that's true. There's nothing happening anywhere around the globe, although I suspect over the next few weeks we will see some activity begin to build up here in the western Pacific and over here in the eastern Pacific. It's going to be a while before the Atlantic Basin is ready to go, so we're going to put a big X over here for now. Might see some development in the western Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, something like that. You just never know. That area is a little bit more unpredictable overall, but the pattern generally favors negative conditions in the Atlantic, positive conditions over here in the Pacific, including the West Pacific as well. So we'll see how this pans out over the next few weeks. Once we get to mid-August and beyond, then I think the Atlantic Basin will really steadily start to light up. So let's take a look at a satellite image here of what's happening across the Atlantic. You can see the Saharan air layer is still the dominant feature for the most part. Some convective activity trying to move through the eastern Caribbean, but upper level winds are pretty robust. More convection, which is just a fancy way of saying thunderstorm activity over here, let's use red, in the southeastern Pacific kind of tangled up and moving across parts of southern Central America. Meanwhile, up in the northern latitudes, you can see this wound up storm system an extra tropical system way up in the northern latitudes as energy and the westerlies comes across here. Uh, as this progresses through the summer, these storm systems will become less intense and they'll be pulling much farther to the north, allowing the deep tropics and the subtropics to have lower wind shear. It's still June and we're still getting these impulses that dive down and you get these strong westerly winds across the tropics and the subtropics for now. Uh, a very typical pattern, and when you mix that in with the Saharan air layer that comes out here off of Africa getting ejected by the East African jet, and you don't have much in the way of convection with it, uh, you get this very hostile pattern over the Atlantic where pressures are generally high, and this is the time of year when you expect that to happen. So again, no major surprises there. And you can visualize this really nicely on the Saharan air layer analysis. Again, from the University of Wisconsin site, a really nice feature. Switch back over to blue here. Very dry, stable air covering much of the tropical Atlantic, pretty much all of it. And that extends a little bit over into the Caribbean and parts of the Gulf of Mexico. Just dry, sinking air, dusty, uh, particulate laden. For, you know, some white, you get those nice sunsets, I guess, if you're over here in the islands, uh, Barbados, down Trinidad, Tobago. Maybe your sunsets are a little extra brilliant because of the Saharan dust. All right, so looking at the eastern North Pacific, this is the one area where it looks like something's going to try to develop over the next several days. 30% chance of that happening over the next five days from the National Hurricane Center. Anything that does get going looks like it would try to develop and move off to the west-northwest with time. Really don't have a pattern that allows these to move up into Mexico right now. That's not the way the pattern is set up. Strong high pressure in the steering layers generally set up across this region to not allow something to curve more to the north. For that, you need more of a trough in between the ridge that's over in the Atlantic and the ridge over the Pacific. And we don't have that right now. So, you folks in Mexico, the resort areas and the smaller towns and villages that are not necessarily resort areas, you don't have to worry about this, I don't think. We'll monitor it, though, just in case that changes. And we do see more people talking about this. Uh, a few folks on Twitter picking up on it. Tyler Stanfield from the University, Oklahoma University, OU, I still get that confused. Is it the University of Oklahoma or Oklahoma University? Maybe I should ask Tyler. <laughs> he would know, right? But it does say right there, OU Meteorology. Anyhow, uh, he was showing this from the GFS and the European Ensembles. That clustering there that you see indicates the ensemble members 
creating this hot spot, if you will, south of the Mexican coastline as a more active, convectively coupled Kelvin wave, as it's called. Just a fancy way of saying, in a meteorological term, it's going to become more active. A period of favorability is coming up, and this generally moves uh, from west to east across the tropics. Maybe it'll spill over into the Atlantic Basin, but I kind of doubt it. It's just we're going to see an uptick in the Pacific, and it's probably going to stay there for a few weeks, and that's usually what happens. By the way, as uh, Tyler notes, we haven't had a named storm yet in the Pacific, so the first one here will be Alvin, and it'll probably be the second latest since the early 70s that we've seen something develop, and uh, he talks about that. Uh, latest was Agatha in 2016, which was July 2nd, so a late blooming season just three seasons ago, and if we get development in four to six days or so, like the models are indicating, we'd be around in second place there since records began accurately in the eastern North Pacific starting the year that I was born, 1970. All right, moving along, I want to show you this, upper ocean heat content. I talk about anomalies. Those are departures from normal. Uh, plus or minus, warmer or colder than normal. We have your actual sea surface temperatures, but those are at the surface. What's happening below the surface? How much energy resides in the upper ocean? And we call that tropical cyclone heat potential or upper ocean heat content. And this nice graphic here, TCHP graphic, tropical cyclone heat potential from the uh, AOML, AOML, what is that, the Atlantic Oceanographic Meteorological Lab or something like that. NOAA, AOML Lab, Hurricane Research Division, creates this. And what we see, you know, one way I like to look at this, anything, I'll outline it in orange. All of this area here that I'm outlining has pretty sufficient upper ocean heat content to work with if you're a hurricane. And this shows you the depth. Well, it doesn't show you the depth. It, you have to infer that the warm water goes pretty deep. That's what this shows. As an example, this very warm upper ocean heat content area in the Western Caribbean tells us that that warm water goes way down, 50 to 100 meters, maybe more. And that's important. And uh, we can look at this and we can go and say, all right, well, this is what it looks like on the 19th of June 2019, yesterday, what about a year ago? Isn't that neat how you can do that? I like it. And you remember last year, all the talk, rightfully so, about how chilly compared to average it was. I still think it wasn't cold. You know, well, it's, it's all in how you look at it. If you like 85 degree water, then in 2018, which is what this shows the same time a year ago, this was pretty chilly. The main development region had virtually no upper ocean heat content to work with here, even though it was only early June. Uh, so compare that to this time now, a year later. A lot more of it, definitely. You can really see that. And uh, yeah, it's starting to creep up there into the main development region pretty far to the east. So this is something that I'll keep an eye on over the next few weeks. We all should. Uh, look at the Gulf of Mexico, too. Kind of similar to last year, so no major changes. A little bit more right here off the southeast coast. And this really starts to matter when you get something to, to develop. We can pretend for a moment that we get something that comes out south of the Cape Verde, tracks along, cuts through the windwards, leewards, uh, like that. Maybe goes across and then into... Southeast Louisiana. This is just hypothetical. You would look and see if that was the forecast track from some of the long-term models, you know, like the GFS or the Euro that go out seven to ten days. You can get these model tracks, and maybe this is one of the ensemble means. This is just an example, a hypothetical here. And you start looking, you say, wow, upper ocean heat content starts to increase at around 45 degrees longitude even more so as you would approach the northern windwards to the leewards, and certainly across Puerto Rico and the Greater Antilles, definitely across uh, 
you know, kind of like a path Irma took. And that's where you really start to analyze this and it starts to help you with your forecast and understanding how strong wind-wise a system and pressure-wise could get. So we'll watch this. Right now we don't have any such scenario that I just drew, so don't worry about it. But when the time comes, I'm going to be showing you this more when we get development. In fact, when we get something popping up here in the eastern Pacific, when this system here gets going, let's check out the upper ocean heat content maps for the eastern Pacific. I'll show you how this works. All right, quick reminder, I am using Patreon more and more. It is more than just a way to fund what I do. It's a great way to do that, certainly. But boy, the sort of micro universe that it creates. I say micro, we got 128 patrons. They're all wonderful, but it's not the same as having everything out there on Twitter or YouTube. It's a micro universe of that. It is a smaller area of social media. And I really, really like that. I would love it to grow, obviously, you know, because I want to be able to do more and I want to be able to support my family and so forth, and you guys are making that happen, but I'm really, really impressed with this. I can do these posts, and you guys can see that. Some of them I can make public, so you can go to Patreon and see what's happening. Some of them we can lock down, and they're just for the members, etc. Uh, this will continue to grow. That's a look that I posted the other day of our new contraption that we're going to put on uh, bridges of uh, you know overpasses and bridges. This clamps to the the little Jersey wall. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. I'll just show you this real quick. As an example, I can share stuff like this with our patrons first and foremost, and uh, they appreciate it. You know, they get sort of the inside access. So if you're interested, now how do I make this go away? There you go. See, I like that. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like WordPress but it's all encapsulated in this neat little world here on Patreon. So if you're interested, you go to patreon.com slash hurricane track and click become a patron and you get to have access to this for just a dollar a month all the way up to 25 and you get some amazing stuff and it goes higher. You know, if you ever want to go with us on a mission, you can pledge some of these amounts and you're you're in the vehicle next to us baby just ask Brent from the US Virgin Islands that's how he did it and now he's like one of our partners it's funny how that works you know it turned into something whoa this is pretty cool and now not only is he a supporter but he is an active participant and I welcome that that would be great you know and, and not everybody can afford to do that I get that so that's the limit the limiting factor but you get some people that are able to do it, and you make some really good friends that way. Uh, and that's it's just, it's just amazing. What a world we live in. So, yep, crowdfunding is just incredible. Patreon.com slash hurricane track. All right, that's it from me for today. As always, folks, I appreciate you listening and watching on whatever device you may have. It still has a screen. And I like the fact that you're on the other side of that screen listening and watching what I do. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of your Thursday. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.